My name's Jesse. I've been watching YouTube videos for years and years now, like many of you. I've learned so much from them, watched product reviews, how-tos, but I've never made one of my own. I recently bought this Ember temperature-controlled coffee mug, and people have been asking me, as a product designer and an engineer, what I think of it. So, decided to make a video, share with you all, uh, this won't be the typical review video with all the features and how it works. I figure you can watch everybody else's videos for that. What I'm going to do is cover some aspects that I thought uh, were not covered in other videos that I didn't know about that potentially affect my enjoyment uh, and continued satisfaction from this product. So stick around. So first, the basics. Coffee mug, charger, and coaster. Uh, one thing that I didn't see covered in other reviews or places is the fact that, first of all, um, I assume this was a ceramic mug. It is and it isn't. It's actually a ceramic coated mug. Um, you probably won't be able to hear this, but it's kind of ceramic and kind of metallic-y. That's because this is actually a stainless steel mug that's been outer coated in a ceramic. Now that's fine because essentially the parts that your mouth touch are ceramic. It more or less has the feeling of a ceramic mug. But that does have a few uh, consequences. One of them is the handle profile. Now this is something you don't see mentioned much, but the packaging is trying to purport that this will become your new favorite mug. Uh, one of the things I really like about a coffee mug is the feel in your hand. And I will tell you that this has a very sharp uh, outer profile. That is probably because they had to make this out of stainless steel and couldn't really make this a nice fat rounded stainless steel and then just had to rely on the outer ceramic coating for finish but not for a lot of fill. So you end up with this kind of sharp profile that's not particularly satisfying to hold, I'm sorry to say. The second thing that I didn't really understand was this looks like an okay size for a coffee mug, but for someone who loves coffee like me, this actually turns out to be smaller than you'd think. Let me explain. Let's do a lineup of some, some good coffee mugs here that I like. Now I put them in this order because this is actually the order of volume. This is my favorite mug over here. Um, this one actually holds about 12 and a half ounces of liquid. Now this is not to the absolute top, this is to the place where you would feel comfortable filling it with liquid before you started to drink it. So 12 and a half ounces. Um, this one holds about 10 ounces of liquid. This beautiful Heath Ceramics mug, while lovely, doesn't actually hold that much coffee. This one holds approximately nine ounces. And believe it or not, this Ember mug only holds about eight and a half ounces of coffee or whatever liquid. That's in part because you can see it's not very tall. The other thing is because the bottom of this mug is actually set off of the base by quite a bit. And that's obviously because they needed to have a bunch of electronics. There's a Bluetooth radio in here. There's a heating coil, a battery, all sorts of stuff like that. So um, it's deceptively small as a coffee mug. So be warned. Now here's another aspect of the Ember coffee mug. I had assumed that this would charge via induction, kind of like um, a lot of Android phones do, now the Apple phones do, um, by which you'd have sort of some sort of a, a coil here and that would induce a, a current in the bottom here and charge it. That's actually not how this charges. Um, I don't know whether that's because that's a more expensive technology or whether it's because um, it wouldn't be as fast to charge as it is uh, with this technology, but essentially there's two gold-plated contacts in the bottom of this saucer. And then there's two gold-plated rings on the bottom of the Ember coffee mug. So these two pins literally just come right in contact with these two uh, traces on the bottom and charge up the battery. Now that's fine, I guess, but there's two oddities about that. The first is I took my nice multimeter, uh, plugged this into the wall. It actually turns out that these two pins are just fully live. They're 19.2 volts directly off of this transformer right to there. I thought there'd be some sort of um, circuitry that knew whether the coffee mug was in the saucer, but there doesn't seem to be. These two pins are just live, which is fine. It's not wall voltage, but still. Um, the thing that doesn't make a lot of sense to me as a product designer is this is a saucer. Now, there's really only a couple reasons you even use a saucer. I think one is probably to um, keep any liquid you have on the bottom of your cup 
um, from marking up your wood counter or table. Um, another one might be to prevent some heat conduction between the bottom um, of, your, of your cup and a table. Um, you know, or keep drips off of your table. They even have this nice depression here, which we assume is to keep kind of spills off of the table. But this saucer actually comes with a sticker in it from Ember that says, dry it well. Water can cause damage to the coaster, so dry your mug before placing it there. This was actually adhered just about there. I know you probably won't be able to see that well, but that's where this decal was. So it seems odd to me that they made a design which completely mimics a saucer. I think they even call it that, uh, coaster or saucer. And yet you're supposed to dry the mug before you put it in this thing. That's kind of the point of a coaster. Now, I don't think it's going to set your house on fire or do anything terribly bad if you actually get this wet. Um, and, and a, some water comes in contact with these, these, uh, these gold contacts. But it does seem a little odd that they have this thing looks like a coaster or, or a, a, you know, some sort of a saucer and you, you're not really supposed to get anything dripping in there. Seems odd. Now let's get to the core function of what the Ember coffee mug is supposed to do, which is essentially to keep your coffee or whatever liquid at the right temperature. Temperature matters, a few degrees better, etc. This coffee mug will attempt to keep the drink you put in it at a certain temperature. I think the range is something like 120 to 145. Um, it comes with an app that runs on your smartphone or a tablet. Uh, and that app ta talks to the mug with Bluetooth. I, I don't think you need to run the app, but the app lets you have more control over what that temperature is. The default is set to 130 for coffee, which is, I think, they, what they determine the, the right temperature for tasting your coffee. I actually like it a little hotter, but obviously lower temperature allows the battery in here to last longer. The app works pretty well. It talks to the mug. It knows when there's liquid in here and when there isn't. And it also tells you when it's running out of power. Um, the LED that's mounted in the base will also tell you that. It turns red when it's run out of power. So um, let's, let's go through a few scenarios. I actually recorded a quick time lapse of a couple scenarios. The first scenario is putting a hot liquid in here, hotter than the preset, so this wouldn't have to do any heating. It's just going to maintain the temperature. And we're going to see how long untouched this mug in a 71 degree room, which is how hot it is or warm it is in this room, 71 degrees, how hot um, this will uh, <laughs> keep and how long it will keep it at that temperature. So here's the setup. We got an ember that is fully charged. You can see the green light. We got a tablet with the ember app, and we have a timer on the right hand side of that same app. So pouring in coffee that's 140 degrees. Now note at the bottom of the app, it says 130. So you know that this um, water that I poured in is warmer than what I set the ember mug for. So it shouldn't take much energy to keep it there. In fact, the ember app is reporting 136 or so is the temperature. And soon I will start the timer and then we're going to um, super fast forward and see how long just leaving that liquid in there the battery lasts for. So now we're at 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 50 minutes, and bingo, 58 minutes or so we get a time to recharge. So slightly less than an hour, we already get the warning. Now we're going to fast forward, hyper time again. We're at an hour 10, hour and 14 minutes. You see the red light go on on the Ember mug. So in just over an hour and 15 minutes, putting hot uh, liquid into this Ember mug, um, we've already completely run out of battery, just maintaining in a 71 degree room the temperature of that coffee. Okay, so now that we've seen that, we're gonna do another scenario. Now we're gonna do the scenario that I think is the most likely use case. The most likely use case is actually, to me, uh, first of all, that I like my coffee more warm. I like it 140, not at 130, so we're gonna set it at that. The other thing we're gonna do is I'm going to fill this with a hot liquid, which is mimicking that I just brewed coffee, poured it in here, and we're gonna wait 20 minutes, mimicking that it either took me 20 minutes to drink this, or that after 20 minutes I just kind of I need a new cup of coffee. So 20 minutes is how long the first cup of coffee took. I'm gonna pour this out, and then I'm gonna pour coffee in here that's a little cooler. I'm gonna pour it in at about 120 degrees. Now that's not cold, but it kind of mimics the coffee that I brewed now slowly getting cooler. So 120 degree coffee I'm gonna pour into here, and we're gonna see how long the battery lasts when this tries to raise the temperature up to my preferred 140 degree setting. Now why is that a typical use case? One thing I wanna mention is, keep in mind this coffee mug 
is full of metal. It's full of what I assume to be a lithium or a lithium polymer battery. It's got a Bluetooth radio, an antenna, heating coils, all sorts of stuff. This cannot go in the microwave. They've made that very clear on the packaging. There's stickers. I totally get it. Cannot go in the microwave. What that means, though, is that you can't put coffee that's cooled in here and then give it a little boost in the microwave. You either pour it in here at a lower temperature and expect this to raise up the temperature, or you have to heat up the coffee in something else and then pour it into your expensive coffee mug. That's why I think this is a typical use scenario. So let's take a look. So on the app, you see 140 is now the temperature I've set the coffee that I like. We have a full ember charge, you see the green, and pouring in the liquid. Now again, I've made sure this liquid is at least 140. We're not using any power to heat it up. And in fact, you can see the app reporting, there you go, at least 140 degrees, starting the timer and hyperlapse. Okay, we're at 10 minutes and 20 minutes and slowing down because at 20 minutes, right about now, we're gonna take the liquid, there you go, okay, 20 minutes, taking the liquid out of the cup, I'm just gonna simply pour it out. You can see the timer's still running, I didn't, there's no trickery here. Now we're gonna pour in liquid that's 120 degrees, again, mimicking me refilling this with coffee that had been maybe sitting on the counter for a bit. And in fact, the app is acknowledging that the liquid is, is lower, um, about 120 degrees. And we're gonna go into hyper time again. Okay, so 25 minutes. Um, 30 minutes, 35 minutes, and we're slowing down because it already, there's 36 minutes, 37 minutes, bam, time to recharge. That was 37 minutes from the very beginning of a full charge, not even from that second cup. So now I'm going to, okay. And now we're gonna go super fast speed again and see when the battery uh, fully dies. So 42 minutes and there we go. The red light is on 42 minutes and 45 seconds. Those are some things I thought you'd wanna know about the Ember coffee mug before you purchased one. So who is it for? Well. I think it's for somebody who maybe nurses one cup of coffee for a very long time, maybe an hour or so. If you're likely to refill it with coffee that you don't have another way of heating or don't want to heat it another way, the battery's not gonna last particularly long. I will say, unfortunately, it's not for someone who drinks a lot of coffee because this cup, as I mentioned, already is I'd say 50% less volume than this one. So you're actually going through this much more quickly. You're gonna have to keep on going back and forth. It's not for somebody who doesn't want to wash this immediately because you can't dishwasher uh, wash this either. You have to wash this by hand. Um, it takes an hour or so to charge this thing. So um, you're not really gonna uh, be kind of constantly charging it and refilling it. I think you'd have to assume it's charged and then you use it and then it's depleted until your next time that you want coffee. Um, one scenario where this might work a little better in is if you actually put coffee in this and then just put it right back on this coaster. If you're willing to have this coaster plugged in next to your work desk or your TV or something, then hypothetically that can solve some of the battery problems. Because while I don't think it can charge and heat at the same time, if you plug it in and put the coffee mug on this, it will at least maintain the temperature of your coffee, even if it's not charging the battery, kind of indefinitely. So that problem is solved there if you're willing to put one of these coasters um, wherever you're consuming this cup of coffee. I think that covers it. I realize it's ironic on this channel called Jesse Makes to have not made anything, but uh, this seemed to be what people wanted to hear from me first. Uh, if you like what you've seen, click subscribe. At the time of me recording this, I have zero subscribers, so please tag along if you can and see what's coming next.